Thank you for being here. To participate fully in this service, it will be helpful if you have a handheld candle as well as one of these worship bulletins. So if you don't have either of those, our ushers, if you raise your hand, our ushers will be glad to get them to you. Also note that at the time that this bulletin was printed, this, the third child of God, a woman named Jane, had not yet died, and since then we have learned that she too has died. We gather here this evening in prayer for our brothers and sisters of St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Vestavia. We gather for Sarah, for Bart, and for Jane, who lost their lives. We gather for those who knew and loved them. We gather for those who bear the emotional wounds of this act of senseless violence. We gather for the clergy and lay leaders of St. Stephen's as they mourn and seek to heal their parish. We gather even because Jesus told us to, to pray for the perpetrator of this violence because we've been instructed by our Lord not ever to meet hate with hate, but to meet hate with love. And I don't know how to do that right now, so I'm glad we're all here together to pray. We gather also to ask God to pour healing, strength, courage, and wisdom on people throughout this land that with God's help, we may work together to make our communities places of justice and peace. We gather finally to borrow the language of my brother priest, the rector of St. Stephen's, John Burris. We gather, as he said, because we know that love is the most powerful force in this world. And in the days, months, and years that come, we will hold on to that truth and know that Christ's love will always shine. Please stand. Light and peace in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one lights a lamp to put it under a bucket, but on a lamp stand where it gives light for everyone in the house. And you, like the lamp, must shed light among your fellow men so that they may see the deed you do and give glory to your Father in heaven. Let us pray. Lighten our darkness, we beseech you, O Lord. And by your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Let us say together Psalm 91, found in your order of service. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. He shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his pinions, and you shall find refuge under his wings. His faithfulness shall be a shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, 
nor of the arrow that flies by day, of the plague that stalks in the darkness, nor of the sickness that lays waste at midday. A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Your eyes have only to behold, to see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation. There shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder. You shall trample the young lion the serpent under your feet. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. It is Christ who died, or rather who was raised, who is also at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will affliction or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, For your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than victorious through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
us pray. Giver of life and love, you created all people as one family and called us to live together in peace. Surround us with your love as we face again the tragedy of gun violence. For Bart, for Bart Rainey and Sarah Yeager and for Jane Pons who were killed. For the traumatized, grieving survivors, for all the members and clergy of St. Stephen's, and those known to you alone, loving God. Make us instruments of your peace. God of righteousness, you have granted our leaders, especially Joe, our president, and Kay, our governor, the members of Congress and of our courts and legislatures, power and responsibility to protect us and to uphold our right to, look to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Strengthen their devotion to our common life and give them clarity of purpose. For all who bear such responsibility, for all who struggle to discern what is right in the face of powerful political forces, loving God, make us instruments of your peace. God of compassion, we give you thanks for first responders, police officers, firefighters, EMTs, and all those whose duties bring them to the streets, the schools, the malls, and the homes where the carnage of gun violence takes place. Give them courage and sound judgment in the heat of the moment and grant them compassion for the victims. For our brothers and sisters who risk their lives in serenity as they rush to our aid, loving God, make us instruments of your Merciful God, bind up the wounds of all who suffer from gun violence, those maimed and disfigured, those left alone and grieving, and those who struggle to get through one more day. Bless them with your presence and help them find hope. For all whose lives are forever changed and broken by the scourge of gun violence, loving God, make, make us the instruments of your peace. Let us pray. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. <clears throat> Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is goodness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. We light these candles in memory of all people whose lives have been cut short.
from senseless acts of gun violence. Though these candles will only burn for a time, the light and love that they bring into their world will remain strong forever. We light these candles to represent our hope as we face the future. Although our lives have been marked by pain and loss, and although pain will remain, we hope for a future that also has joy and happiness. We light these candles to represent the peace that we seek in our lives. May we find comfort and solace in the midst of our pain. May the light of these candles remind us of the perseverance of the human spirit that always seeks life and love, even in life's most painful moments.
Some of the most ancient words of our faith are found in the following blessing. So as I say these words over you, keep in mind, people have been holding on to these words and God has been using these words to bless us and give us strength for millennia. And so, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks to you.